Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to the hopeful elect that scattered abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are your so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and Shalom to your speckled birds and your Israelite foreigners that scatter out in other nations that look like the other nations but are, in fact, Israelites. And the title of this lesson is Press Towards the Mark. All right, you know, and this uh, title is based upon a scripture, you know, that's written here in. Um, Philippians chapter 3 and verse uh, 14. I'm going to read it in a second. You know, but, um, you know, seeing everything that's brewing up in the earth, you know, seeing that, you know, uh, all these end time prophecies, you know, are popping off, you know, our mindset, you know, should be pressing towards the mark. All right. And by pressing towards the mark, I mean, you know, enduring. All right. You know, reaching the goal. All right. And what is the main goal that we're trying to reach? All right. Receiving that crown of life, you know, receiving, you know, the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, immortality, all right, you know, so on and so forth, you know, we are in the fourth quarter, all right, with just a few seconds left on the clock, all right, so our mindset, you know, should be, you know, pressing towards the mark, you know, enduring, you know, whatever it is that, you know, we may have to face, you know, in our day to day life, you know, so on and so forth, you know, because the scripture says, you know, in James chapter one, I'm gonna get it later on. You know, he, the man that who, he blesses he that endured temptation. You know, when he's tried, he will receive that crown of life, you know? And, you know, as many of you, you know, you probably already know, you know, Ecclesiastes chapter two, you know, it tells you that when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this walk that we're in, you know, it's pretty much like a race, you know, and we're in this way, in this race that we're in, you know, we're supposed to be pressing towards the mark, all right? The finish line, the goal, all right? You know, a lot of times in the scriptures, you know, this walk that we're in, you know, it's referred to as a, as a race, all right? Paul refers to this, you know, this truth, this walk that we're in as a race, you know? And uh, I'm gonna get all that, you know, in this lesson. So, you know, this is gonna be a, you know, a pretty much a quick exhortation type of lesson for you brothers and your sisters out there, you know, to keep enduring, keep fighting a good fight of faith, you know, so that in the end, you will ultimately receive you know that crown of life all right so let's go ahead and start off with uh philippians chapter 3 and uh verse 13 and it says brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forget forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before all right now let's read the other side all right the other side is uh the N the niv all right let's read the niv it's on the right side it says brothers and sisters i do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing i do forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead all right so that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing you know you know uh paul he pretty much just said brothers and sisters i do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it all right you know we have not taken hold you know of the goal yet you know the crown you know the kingdom of yahweh bashim yahweh shai immortality you know then he goes on to say but one thing i do forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead that's supposed to be our mindset you know forgetting what's behind you know the world you know all the things that's in the society all right you know because all these things that we see right now is temporal like what you read in um you know it talks about that in uh the book of second corinthians chapter four i believe you know it talks about how the things that are seen you know it's temporal you know but we look forward to the things that are not seen because those are eternal roughly paraphrasing you know, so this is the mindset, you know, that we're supposed to have, you know, forgetting the things that are behind, you know, and straining toward what is ahead. All right. And what's ahead? The kingdom, Yahweh, Shai, salvation, you know, receiving that crown of life. All right. Now, verse 14, it says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Yahweh and in the Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's go ahead and um, jump to the blue letter Bible right quick. All right. And I want to see what this word is. Uh, mark means in a um in the blue letter in the he in the uh, Greek, all right. So the Greek word for the word mark 
in uh, the scripture is Scopos, all right? Strong's G, 4649, Skapas. Skapas. All right, Skapas, Salaki. So this is the definition for this uh, word. So it says, an observer, a watchman. It says, um, the distant mark looked at the goal or end one has in view. All right. And what is our goal? All right. What is the end that we're trying to reach? You know, the uh, salvation, you know, getting on the chariot, getting that crown of life, you know, immortality, the kingdom of Yahweh Shimei was shot. All right. So let's go back to the uh, blue letter and read that again. It says, uh, it says, I press toward the mark, all right, the goal for the prize of the high calling of Yahweh and the Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All right. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be pressing towards the mark. All right. The goal. All right. Looking forward to what's ahead and not what's behind. All right. Because the things that are behind, those are things of the world. You know, those things are temporal. We're supposed to be looking towards the mark, the prize, that uh, that uh, incorruptible crown, you know. You know, the kingdom of Yahweh Shimei Shai, immortality. You know, this is what we're supposed to be looking forward to. All right. And like I said, you know, uh, the scriptures a lot of times, you know, refer to this walk that we're in, you know, as a race, you know. So let's go ahead and get that. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. And it says, um, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. All right. So, you know, like I said, you know, this rate, this uh, walk that we're in right now is like a race, you know, and we're running so that we'll be able to receive a prize in the end. All right. Let's read this in the uh, NIV. It says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the prize. All right. We're trying to get the kingdom of Yahweh Shimei was shot, that incorruptible crown. All right. And we're going to read about that in the next verse. And it says, and every man that striving for the mastery is temperate in all things. All right. Temperate, you know, is basically another word for being disciplined. So in this walk, you know, you got to be disciplined. You know what I'm saying? You know, for example, uh, matter of fact, let me just continue reading this verse. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. And it says, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible crown. All right. For example, this is the point that I was about to make. All right. So in the world, you know, you have these different athletes, you know, they they pretty much they're striving to receive, you know, a, 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 a corruptible crown. All right. You know, like LeBron James, you know, he wants to get a championship. Steph Curry, you know, uh, you know, these different boxers, your, your, your Javante Davises, you know, your Floyd Mayweathers, you know. They strive to get championships, all right? Those type of rewards, you know, but see us on the other hand, you know, we striving for an incorruptible crown, all right? You know, and pertaining to these athletes of the world, you know, in order for them to receive, you know, uh, you know, their reward, you know, it takes a lot of discipline. You know, I believe I did a lesson about this in the past. You know, uh, I'm thinking that it was a boxer. I think I, I want to say it was Muhammad Ali. You know, he's talking about how you know, whenever he has a big fight coming up, it was either Muhammad Ali or Mike Tyson. It was one of them, you know, but pretty much they was talking about how, you know, before, you know, a big fight, you know, they were they were strained from having any type of sexual intercourse with their wives and whatnot. Right. Because a lot of times when, you know, you have sex and whatnot, you know, that takes, you know, your uh, focus away. Right. You know, so a lot of times these different athletes, they're disciplined. You know, they were strained from certain things so that they're prepared and they're focused on their goal. So it's the same way, you know, with us being in this truth. You know, we have to be disciplined. That's why the scripture says every man that's striving for the mastery is temperate in all things. All right. You got to be uh, temperate and disciplined. All right. You know, but the point is, you know, that I was trying to make, you know, this walk is, uh, you know, likened unto a race. All right. You know, and we're trying to all receive you know, that prize, all right? And what is the prize? Like we just read about in verse 25. It says, now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown, all right? That's what, that's what the prize is. This, is. this is the ultimate goal, all right? That crown of life, you know, immortality, the kingdom of Salaki, the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? So let's jump to James chapter one. And Salaki,
in verse 12 all right and we're gonna yeah verse 12 it says blessed is the man that endureth temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which is which is, which the lord hath promised to them that love him all right so you know if you endure this race you run the race all right you overcome the little obstacles and the little hurdles that you might have to go through in this race and whatnot you know you're going to receive that crown of life that the lord has promised to them that love him right you know this is the this is this is what pressing towards the mark is all about you know running the race overcoming the obstacles that may be you know in the race you know when you watch uh you know a lot of these track stars and whatnot you know they have little uh they have different you know, they, it's certain times when they have little obstacles on the track where they have to jump over it, you know, so on and so forth. You know, this is what this race that we're in is like, all right? You know, while we're running this race, we're going to have to have different hurdles that we have to jump over and get over, all right? But like we just read, it says, blessed the man that endureth temptation, the temptation being those hurdles. It says, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him, all right? You know, so if we... You know run this race overcome these obstacles we're going to get that crown of life all right so let's jump to um ecclesiastes chapter uh two because <laughs> the scriptures plainly tell you you know once you come into this truth you know you're going to face temptation all right you know and this is where a lot of israelites that come into the truth you know they don't be understanding what they're involved in all right, they just think it's going to be a cakewalk. Oh, I'm an Israelite. You know, it's all—it's just all about fringes and you know, screaming Judah and this, that, another. No, you finna catch hell. All right, you know, and a lot of these leaders they fail to teach their congregation what they're going to have to face. All right, that's why a lot of times you know people end up falling out the truth because they wasn't warned about what this walk is about beforehand. All right, you know, so this is Ecclesiastes chapter two and verse one. It says, "My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul." for temptation all right trials and tribulations you know those different obstacles and hurdles that you're going to have to hop over and get over during this race that we're running all right verse 2 it says set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble all right you're supposedly you're supposed to uh constantly endure all right you know you're not supposed to you know get feeble you know faint-hearted you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. You're supposed to continue to run the race, all right? Jump over the little hurdles that you're supposed to get over that you that may be placed in your path, so on and so forth, all right? Verse 3, it says, Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end, all right? You're supposed to cleave unto your house by shy, you know, whenever you're going through certain things, all right? You know, a lot of times when people go through things, you know, they tend to forsake your house by all right? You know what I'm saying? You know? But see, that, that's what the that's why, you know, it's a good, you know, it's good to read about the story of Job, you know, because Job, he was catching all types of hell. But not once did he forsake Yahweh Shai. Not once did he for not worth not once did he curse Yahweh Shai. You know, on the other hand, you know, he, he you had it. He had his wife pretty much uh, telling him to curse the Lord and die. All right. You know, but Job, he held his integrity. He stood he stood 10 toes down, you know. He continued to endure and he was increased at the latter end all right verse 4 it says whatsoever is brought upon thee take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state verse 5 for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity all right so you know if you want to be seen as acceptable you know in the outside of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, you want to be placed in that furnace of adversity all right during this race that we're running while you're trying to press towards the mark, you know, it's going to be different obstacles that you're going to have to go through. All right. This is how it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, the scriptures tell you in, um, I think it's the book of Second Edris. You know, uh, it tells you that, you know, he who was born upon the earth, you know, must fight. Or this is the condition of the battle. You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing, you know, but this is the condition of the battle. You know, you have to fight. You have to run a race. You have to overcome the obstacles that are placed in your path while you're running this race. All right. Let's get um Matthew chapter six. And let's start at verse 19. 
all right because like we read about earlier where it talks about where, uh, paul pretty much said you know forgetting the things that are behind and pressing towards the things that are ahead all right you know we're, we're supposed to be focused on the kingdom y'all by shimmy out shot all right the incorruptible crown you know, not the things of this world or what this world has to offer. So this is uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. All right? Verse 20, it says, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Verse 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also all right verse 22 it says the light of the body is the eye if therefore thy eye be single all right meaning you know you're focused thy whole body shall be full of light verse 23 but if thy eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if thy therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness all right so if you're focused on the wrong things your your whole body is going to be full of darkness all right so you know while we're running this race you know we got to keep our eyes single all right you know our eye single on the mark the prize the goal all right and it, when it says keep your eye single it's talking about just staying focused all right keeping your mind focused on what truly matters you know what i'm saying you know not caught up in the things of this world because like i'm going to bring out in second corinthians chapter 4 you know it tells you that the things of this world you know uh well roughly paraphrasing talks about how the things that are seen you know it's temporal all right but the things that are not seen you know it's eternal all right so this is uh second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 and it says while we look not matter of fact let's start at verse 17 it says for a light affliction which is is which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory all right you know so you know the things that we're dealing with you know while we're trying to run this race you know pressing towards the mark you know it's considered a light affliction right it can't be it can't be compared you know to what you know your how about shimmy out shy is ultimately going to bless us with you know lord willing we'll be of the elect verse 18 it says while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen, right? We're not supposed to be paying attention or focused on the things that are seen. You know what I'm saying? These, this money, you know, uh, the nice cars, you know, uh, the lavish lifestyle that this uh, this place has to offer, you know, the big houses, you know what I'm saying? These, uh, you know, the women and all this other stuff, you know, all this stuff, you know, it's temporal, all right? You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be focused on the things which are not seen, all right? Let's continue. It says, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal, all right? You know, and we can't see the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua right now, but just know, you know, everything that comes with the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, that's eternal, all right? That's going to be forever. But th these things on this side, you know, hey, it's, it's going to uh, it's gonna cease to exist. Like when you read about in uh, 2 Peter chapter uh, 2, I believe, or it might be chapter 3, you know, it tells you that, you know, uh, all it said pretty much tells you that you know everything is going to be burned up all right let me see if i could get it right quick for edification purposes um yeah verse uh this is second peter chapter 3 and verse 10 it says but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up so hey these things that are here on this earth you know the things that we see in the society is temporal because it's going to be all burned up all right but the kingdom that's coming you know that's eternal right it's never going to be taken away it's never going to be destroyed so on and so forth all right so um, let's get Second Timothy, chapter two. No, Second Timothy, chapter four. Salakia. And um, let's start at verse four. No, let's start at verse seven. All right, this is the mindset that we should have. All right. So this is Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter four, and verse seven. It says, "I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith." All right. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, it says that, you know, uh, this is the condition of the battle. You know, um, let me see if I could get it.
Yeah, 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 57. It says, Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. All right, so this is a fight that we're, uh, that we're in right now, all right? That's why you uh, in 2nd Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7, it's, it says, I have fought the good fight, all right? So let's go back to that. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. All right. You know, and this this fight that we're in right now is all about, you know, keeping our faith. You know what I'm saying? Verse 8. It says, Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. All right. Like we read about earlier. You know, the, the prize that we're or the mark that we're trying to uh, press towards is that incorruptible crown. It says, which the Lord, the righteous, the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. All right. This is the end goal. All right. That that crown, that uh, that incorruptible crown, you know, but you, you have to fight the good fight of faith. You know, you have to run the race and continue to press toward the mark. That's the only way that you're going to receive that. All right. So, um, pretty much, you know, that was that, you know, yeah, I think that pretty much concludes this lesson. All right. More of the story, you know, hey, continue to press towards the mark. Right. You know, we, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this lesson, I believe I said, you know, we are in the fourth quarter. All right. A few seconds left on the clock. You know what I'm saying? Uh, end time prophecies are popping off like crazy, you know, so our mindset should be pressing towards the mark, that prize and continuing to, uh, you know, endure, you know, while we run this race. All right. So with that, you know, Lord willing, you know, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to you brothers and you sisters out there that scattered to the four corners of the earth. And as always, I want to give all praises, honor and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.